Hello out there casual fanatics and welcome to another fun 5e builds. Shooting this a little bit differently, doing this a little bit of a different way. Uh, I'm trying to do the video up here on my cell phone camera so I can do this in higher definition. And uh, as you have been expecting, this is the last fun 5e builds for 2015 and we are finishing off the Tokusatsu Heroes. Uh, as you can see on the screen here, uh, the last one that we have now is Alex D'Ambra, level 20 uh, member of uh, Project Fusion, uh, Fusion Black. And his role is the Brawler. He is the one that I have ended up saving for last. And as you can see from this page here, he is part wizard, but mostly monk. And we'll go into why that is here. Uh, as you can see, again, I'm using Beyond Tabletop. And that is, once again, so that I have uh, better access to some of the customizations that uh, I have done for this. So, let's get started off here, of course. Human. Uh, six le levels of wizard, as you can see. And 14 levels of monk. Uh, again, background folk hero. Um, by the way, Alex D'Ambra, uh, the name is actually uh, something that I came up with uh, as an independent character of my own, alongside Ellen Jansen, um, who was originally going to be a common Rider-like character uh, known simply as Project Umbra. Uh, but he has since morphed into the brawler of Project Fusion. Uh, he's a little bit cocky, uh, very sure of himself, but uh, he has a good heart. And his name actually, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, from combination of uh, various different languages in Latin and uh, Italian, means uh, Warrior of Shadow. Because, you know, previously Project Umbra, Umbra meaning shadow, Latin. Right. Uh, background, full key rope, of course, uh, par for the course here. Uh, but now let's get into the background thing, since we're starting to do that now, because I can actually do that now. Uh, defining the event of his life, I stood alone against a terrible monster. This is kind of some of his, uh, kind of some of his personality standing there. He tends to fight a lot by himself because he is a full-on one-on-one -on -one fighter. Uh, he loves going straight head-on into things. And so, at one point in his career, he's actually had to solo fight a monster because of uh, them being a serious threat to his friends. Alright. So, uh, the second thing, personality trait, thinking is for other people. I prefer action. That is Alex D'Ambra in a nutshell. He's not much for using his brain. You know, you just point him at what he's going to fuck up and he's going to go and hit it. Uh, ideals, respect. People deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. I actually kind of struggled on that one, but I figured that one probably would end up being uh, the best one for him. Uh, bonds, I protect those who cannot protect themselves, because, of course, he is a Power Rangers type hero. And uh, his one flaw, I have trouble trusting in my allies, because again, he is the big guy, and he knows he knows he's good, and yet he also knows that he's really tough, and he can usually get it done more easily than anyone else. Uh, so let's take a look at his ability scores here. Uh, strength, uh, gonna be pretty high, of course. Uh, dexterity, definitely way high, because he is primarily a uh, monk focus. So, 15 and 18 base, respectively. Uh, his intelligence and wisdom are pretty good, too. Even though he is in a bit of a thinker, he doesn't really need to think that much. So, I mean, he has the capability to think. He just doesn't like to. Um, and similarly with Wisdom, he has the capability for good insight, he just doesn't care much. Uh, constitution, Average, Charisma is his dumb stat, because he is one abrasive motherfucker. You know, some people like to, uh, 
flavor or charisma as being uh, a measure of attractiveness. I think it's more a measure of being able to draw people's attention. So, you know, unicorns would have high charisma because unicorns are fucking special beasts. You know? A uh, 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 blink... You know, a blink dog. With, uh, you know, a, a dog that can teleport around is kind of attention-grabbing. So, and of course, dragons, very attention-grabbing, so they're gonna have high charisma. In this case, Alex puts people off with his attitude. Uh, visually, I don't think he, he would be that ugly. He just... He's an off-putting personality. So... That's what you got there. Uh, looking down at what skills he has... Um, Arcana and Athletics are going to be the two big ones for him, of course. Uh, because of him being mostly a monk. Um, his other major one is actually going to be survival, and I think I only gave him three, uh, ones that were trained here. Uh, he does have a little bit of a bonus in animal handling, but, uh, yeah, acrobatics, athletics, and survival. Though, even though he's not very charismatic, I can imagine he probably would be pretty intimidating in a pinch. Uh, combat... Quite a lot of hit points, as you would expect from a 20th level character. Um, but actually, I'm going to go uh, to a different place and show you what all his uh, attack bonuses are here. Uh, of course, because he's mostly Monk, his uh, major hit dice is an 8. Uh, plus 5 to initiative. Um, so... And I believe for his AC, I went ahead and calculated Mage Armor, because, I mean... The builds that I have here, they're going to be doing mage armor right off. So, uh, let me see here. All right, yeah, here, here's uh, his attack stats. Here, uh, he primarily can use either a quarter staff or short sword. Uh, for his build, I would prefer it to be a uh, a quarter staff. And uh, the plus eleven to attack, which is respectable. Uh, plus five. Or plus 5 additional to his damage, so d8 plus 5, nice. Um, and, uh, I, of course, one of his spells there, actually, you can see his burning hands. Um, and I, act, I actually I put that in there mostly so I could have a spell casting DC there of a plus 9. So, let's, uh, yeah, let's take a look at uh, what else we've got here. Of course, he's got his quarter staff. He's got a short sword. Uh, he's got his sidearm, and of course, he can use uh, his own bludgeoning weapons. And as for, uh, of course, he and of course, you know, he does also have his chaos fuser. Um, for um, I don't talk a lot about this because I haven't talked a lot about this in the past because it really hasn't mattered because I've really only ever given uh, enough levels just to get a monastic tradition. But there are some other um, feats that are involved here with being a monk, specifically with Alex de Umbra being a higher level of monk than the prior characters. And the first one that I need to touch on is key points. And a lot of monk abilities use key points in some way. It's kind of a way to represent them um, using their training and their abilities to kind of hulk up, you know, kind of be able to use their abilities and, and do fantastic athletic feats like you'd see in a uh, Chinese wire foo movie or something like that. One of those abilities is wholeness of body. So, you know, so you can use a key point, and if I remember correctly, and be able to heal. Uh, we'll get into some specifics on that here in a bit. In fact, we'll get into the specifics on that right now. Um, because actually, here we have the feats, and we have the spells. So let me just go ahead and 
All right. So, yeah, like I said, I don't normally go into much detail on the monk feats, but I'm going to this time because it is a very important part of this particular build, the Brawler build. So, um, yeah, 14 key points. Uh, you can recuperate them after a 30-minute uh, meditation during your rest. Uh, here's the main thing that uh, key point is used for. Flurry of Blows. You can spend a key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. So not only can you whack someone uh, upside the head once, you can also do an additional boom, boom. So it's like, you know, kind of the uh, Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star. Alright, uh, Patient Defense is another feat that he's got for this one. Spend one key point to dodge as a bonus action. So basically, kind of your Matrix dodge. Yeah. Um, Step of the Wind. Use one key point to disengage or dash as a bonus action, and your jump distance is doubled for the turn. Again, straight out of wire foo, you can run away and just leap up out of the way. So uh, again, once more, the uh, way of the open hand monastic tradition, because really what I had in mind was even though he can use weapons, he's mostly going to be kicking your ass with these. This and feet are the only weapons he needs. So, um, he has unarmored mo movement, of course, so that uh, his movement increases by 25 feet when not using armor or shield, which is all the time. Uh, can move across vertical surfaces and liquids without falling. Again, wire foo kind of thing. You know, like the Matrix when they're running up around in the doge dojo and, and running up the poles and flipping off and stuff. Alex can do that shit. Um, let's see what else. Uh, deflect missiles. Use reaction to reduce damage from ranged weapon attack by D10 plus 19. If damage is re reduced to zero, you catch the missile is small enough. May you spend one key point to use the missile for a ranged attack, which has proficiency and counts as a monk weapon. So basically, you know, you can use that missile exactly like he would use his sidearm bla blaster and only just, you know, enemies like throwing an arrow at him, catch it, throw it back. Uh, slow fall. Reduce any falling damage you take by 70. Uh, now I imagine that's probably something you would have to spend a key point for, but even so. Um, that's... and again, the 70 hit points is probably determined by this level there. You know, falling damage, if you're in a D&D campaign and you ever get into a situation where you're in a falling trap, you'll want to get stuff like, uh, have people who can cast Featherfall have like the Ring of Featherfall uh, magic item, or Slow Fall. And actually, in this case, it's not so much kind of a magical thing for the monk, it's more basically him finding a way to, you know, either, you know, get up against the wall and slow his momentum down, like uh, Mega Man X's wall slide, or uh, the Mario wall slide from some of the more recent 2D Mario games. So, something like that. Um, of course, he gets extra attacks as he gets older, so again, Kenshiro. <laughs> uh, stunning Strike. When you hit with a melee weapon attack, spend one key point. Target must make a DC 19 or be stunned until the end of your turn. What does stunned mean? It means they can't do shit. Not a thing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It means basically, 
you get a free turn against them. Powerful, powerful ability that. Uh, key empowered strikes. Your unarmed strikes count as magical. So, again, you're coming up against a magical creature, like, say, a ghost who normally can't be affected by physical damage. Alex can punch a ghost in the face and not even blink. Boom! I ain't afraid of no ghost. Um, wholeness of body, again, regain uh, 52 HP as an action. Uh, long rest recuperates. So you can only use it once uh, per day, really. Uh, still, 42 HP. Got a little boost there. Um, probably, if I remember correctly, about. Well, about a. About a fifth or a quarter of the HP that he had there. He had 148, so. Evasion. Whenever you save for half damage, take no damage on success and half damage on a failure. Again, I assume that this is going to be a one per day ability, otherwise that is OP as fuck. Uh, stillness of mind. Use action to end one effect that is charming or frightening you. You can't scare Alex. And you can't dissuade Alex. He is hardcore. Uh, purity of body, you're immune to disease or poison. So if you're coming up against a monster, like say, um, the drunken poisonous Christmas tree from uh, Power Rangers Samurai, who like breathes poison into your face. Alex just looks at him like, what? I feel nothing. Fuck off, you tree. Fuck off, you stupid tree. <clears throat> I'm sorry, for a Power Rangers, that's a little coarse. <laughs> for a Power Rangers inspired character, that's a little coarse, I apologize. Uh, Tranquility, after a long rest, to gain the benefit of the Sanctuary spell. Um, I don't remember what the Sanctuary spell is, but I know that that's a pretty, but I imagine that's a pretty powerful, uh, ability. Uh, Tongue of the Sun and the Moon. You understand all spoken languages, and creatures that can an understand any language understand you. Again, this kind of plays into the fact that he has a weirdly high intelligence score for someone who is mostly focused on beating people up. Sure, he's mostly focusing on beating pe people up, but this boy has hidden depths. Because he can understand you trying to trash talk him perfectly and shoot back insults in your own language. Diamond Soul, you're proficient in all saves. That's a big one because that that gives you a nice little boost to every single save you can possibly make. If it's a strength check, strength save for uh fortitude uh in Constitution save, save. You're pretty much uh, bulletproof now if if you're proficient in all of them. Especially because if you fail a save, you get to spend one key point and re-roll it. Keep in mind you have 14 per day, so you pretty much got no excuse for ever failing a saving throw. Alright, uh, and of course there are a few uh, spellcasting type things, but not very much. We'll get into what little he has here in a bit. Uh, his major feats, though, uh, I did give him some stat increases. So he only has three uh, actual feats. Uh, grappler, you have advantage on attacks versus creatures you are grappling. Use action to pin a creature you are grappling. Success means you are both restrained. Creatures larger auto don't automatically escape from your grapples. So, yeah, basically that's 
if you've got them in like close melee combat and you're holding on to them, they're gonna be hard pressed to let go, and you can just you know grab and boom, 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 and then turn around, turn them around so your opponent, so that your uh, people can can take out their bow or their blasters and all. Uh, tavern brawler, proficient with improvised weapons and unarmed strikes. So, so basically, um, this turns him from your typical monk to uh, the average protagonist of a Jackie Chan movie. You know? Oh, there's a ladder over there. I'm gonna go WWE on this shit. Broom handle. Now it's a staff. <laughs> Basketball. Boom. Give and go to your face, boy! And then, of course, we have Weapon Master, so I made sure that he had proficiency in all of the, uh, all the weapons that he's got. Uh, like I said, spellcasting, not that big of a deal on him. Um, most of what he's got here is actually going to be uh, close range spells. And his spell save DC is not as big as some of the others. Um, it is a 17. So, you're going to have a lot easier time uh, saving from his spells. Uh, burning Hands, of course, which is kind of like a... Boom! Hadouken! Yeah. You send out a 15-foot cube in front of you. Targets and cube take 3d6 fire damage. Uh, 1d6 damage per slot level uh, above first. You can uh, save a dozen additional d6. And, uh, I don't even remember what his slots are, how many slots he has, but, uh, I, I'm pretty sure he's got, uh, yeah, I don't think he's going to have quite as many slots relative to, uh, some of his, uh, other more spellcast recounter parts, like the, uh, like, uh, Becky the Sniper, or definitely like Jod the uh, Techie. Uh, Chill Touch. Because of course he is in close range, um, he does have stuff that uh, involves touch. Of course this one is arranged, even though it says Chill Touch. Uh, make ranged spell attack. Target takes 4d8 necrotic damage and can't regain HP until the start of your next turn. Um, undead also have disadvantage on attack rolls, so this makes him really good at uh, taking out uh, zombies and skeletons and such. Uh, enhance ability, I think I've mentioned this in the past before. Of course, he's mainly going to be using that on himself. Uh, expeditious retreat, because while you can go in and take hits, sometimes you just gotta get the fuck out of dodge. Um, fireball. Again, kind of a... I don't get... kind of thing. Uh, 86 fire damage. Yeah. Uh, mage armor, of course. Um, I put in his AC based on the fact that he's pretty much always going to have mage armor activated. Oh, here's the Sanctuary spell. I did go ahead and put this in so I can see. This is that one monk ability that he gets a similar effect to. Any creature that attacks or casts spell at the worded creature must make a wisdom save to do so. On failure, must choose a different target or lose that spell. So basically, you can't, so basically, you, you can't touch the boy. Uh, again, because I was referring to uh, touch uh, range spells, we have a Shocking Grasp, so that you can get in and be like... Shh. Fun thing about Shocking Grasp is that if the uh, target is wearing metal armor, you get advantage on it. So, you know, you can roll the attack twice over and get basically double the chance to hit it. Um, really, the last spell that is unique here to Alex is Spider Climb. Uh, it is a touch range, so he can lay it on himself or on other people. 
The Willing Target gains the ability to move up, down, and across vertical surfaces and ceilings, leaving hands free! So that means not only can Alex walk around on vertical surfaces and on ceilings, he can stand up there, look down on you, and be like, BOOM! You know, drop down and Roman Reigns Superman punch on you. In fact, if I were the DM, I would actually roll a- I would have him actually roll like a T10 damage for that, but that's just me. <laughs> You're dropping down from the ceiling and you hit? Okay, roll D10. <laughs> yeah, normally his unarmed strike is D8, I can give him a couple extra for that. <laughs> But yeah, and you gain a climb speed equal to your walking speed, which means, which means basically as fast as fast as you can move along the ground, you can go up something, and that's an immensely powerful ability to have because most of the time when you're climbing, your speed is cut in half because of course climbing is much more difficult to do than walking. But Alex can climb just as quickly as he can walk. Oh, I, I missed one here. Another one. Kind of uh, enforcing kind of bullet time on himself. He can cast slow. And um, up, when he casts this, up to six creatures in a 40-foot cube within 120 feet out. Must make wisdom saves or have their speed halved. Take minus two to AC and dex saves. Can't use reactions can take either action or bonus action on its turn, but not both, and can't make more than one melee or ranged attack on its turn. If it casts a spell with time of one action, 50% chance the spell doesn't take effect until its next turn. Affected creatures make wisdom saves at the end of each turn to end the spell for them. So again, that is basically enforcing bullet time. You know, you can cast that spell in and all the enemies will have and he can just go in and BOOM! 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 Ba -ba! And then activate Flurry of Blows and Kenshiro. Oh my god. I probably got that quote wrong, I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, something else I'm gonna do here. I'm, ju I'm just, I'm gonna give you an example of uh, his, his attack ability. So, Let's say um, he, you know, let's say he's going up against a monster with a DC of 15. Uh, so, you know, he's got plus 11 to attack. So as long as he can, he gets a 14 or better, he's got a decent chance to attack. Now, of course, he's 20th level, so he's not going to be facing off against monsters that weak one likely, but this is a hypothetical. So, roll the attack. Yeah, you know, see, he rolls a 5. With his attack bonus, he got a 16. So, he hit. And he's going to roll his damage in 7 hit points. Okay. Now, he can use his key points and do an additional 2 attacks. Got another 16, hit again. Got 23, hit again. So, I'm going to roll cut and damage a couple more times. Uh, another 10 more damage. And another 13. So, a total of 30 points of damage on one turn. And that's... I mean, if we're talking about a monster that has an AC of 15, honestly, 30 points of damage is probably boom, 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 you're dead. Of course, again, he's probably not going to be going up monster that week at his level, but it's a hype of that. So, then, now you can see kind of the power that he's got. He's not uh, overall the strongest or most, or most technically capable fighter, but he's gonna put the hurting on him. Especially once he gets slow in there, because then he can go in and while you're trying to go, he can just go, nah son, BOOM! And with that, I mean, 
that's it. That's... There you have the entirety of Project Fusion. You have all the major roles for a team. You have the first one we did, a leader character, who has the ability to direct her team into battle with Ellen Jansen. You have the uh, roguish uh, scout character, Miss Nai Young, who can get in, get in, shank a foe, and get out. And do a lot of damage doing it. You have the sniper character, uh, Becky Bailey, who can stay way back and just go boom, 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 boom. You have the techie character, Judd Sakamoto, who is mostly focused on, uh, well, keeping himself, self, his friends, and his allies alive, while also getting in his shots as well. And then last but not least, you have Alex D'Ambra, the brawler, the monk-focused brawler, who really knows just that sometimes the best defense is to punch a motherfucker in the face. Now you might be asking, is there a way to make a sixth ranger? Well, the answer is yes. You can play around with any of these archetypes and come up with something completely unique along the same route and be able to make any kind of ranger you want. You don't have to make necessarily the hard and fast leader, sniper, scout, techie, or brawler like I did. You can mix and match classes in there. You don't even have to use wizard. I mean, uh, with the uh, modern magic on Earth Arcana, you could use Warlock and be able to do a lot of the same thing, things at, at sixth level of Ghost in the Machine Warlock and, and then be able to, you know, have kind of a different flavoring to it. Maybe you can Maybe you could make a whole team of Warlock-based ones that are kind of like your team's Psycho Rangers and, and have those be in the DM and have them go against your team. You can do a wide variety of things with these concepts. And in fact, I encourage you to take what we've come up with and do something different with them. I encourage you to experiment with what we've got. And if you come up with something you find interesting, I want to see it. I want to see what you've got. I want to see what you think about the stuff that I've made, and I want to see the stuff that you've made so that, you know, we both can learn more about tabletop gaming. Because that's the fun thing about this hobby. Tabletop gaming is not just one person in front of a screen like this. It is a cooperative social game. And you learn a lot from other people while you're playing it. So, I mean, like I said, I want to hear from you. Come up with some of the adjustments that you've made and let me know about them. Tell me what you think about the builds that I've done. And that goes not just for this, but the other uh, fun 5e builds that I've done so far, including, well, the most recent one from this point, the Jedi and Sith Special. Um, and that's also it for 2015 on Fun 5e Builds. I'm thinking that aside from 5e, I may mix in some Pathfinder in 2016. Uh, since I am starting to learn a little bit more about Pathfinder itself. So stay tuned because 2016 for Fun 5e Builds is going to be pretty doggone interesting. Until next time, thank you all for joining me here, Casual Fanatics. I am Jeremy, this has been Fun 5e Builds, and until next year, keep it casual, y'all.